Astronomers have announced the observation of the first quadruple asteroid system or a four-body asteroid system. It is the asteroid 130 Electra and its three moons and of course this makes Electra the first known asteroid with three natural satellites. All of its moons are quite small, just a kilometer or a couple of kilometers in diameter. And this discovery is a very exciting result because astronomers have been trying to look for quadruple systems for a while in the solar system. There is a lot that we still do not understand about the asteroid belt, especially about the formation and stability of different asteroids. In this video, we'll look at the new moon around the asteroid Electra, why it's so different when compared to other moons. We'll look at asteroids in general and what these findings mean. I'm Sandhya Ramesh and this is Pure Science. Asteroids are minor planets. Minor planets are not dwarf planets. In our solar system, anything that orbits the sun but is not a planet or a comet is designated as a minor planet. There are millions of asteroids in our solar system, the majority of which are concentrated in the main belt or the asteroid belt or the main asteroid belt that is situated between Mars and Jupiter. When we think of the asteroid belt, we typically tend to think of it in Star Wars terms with hundreds of rocks suspended in a small patch of crowded sky. But this is not so. There are millions of asteroids, but they're all very small in size and they occupy a large orbit that is larger than that of Mars. So there's a lot of space here for millions of very small rocks. The total mass of asteroids in the asteroid belt is just about 4% that of the moon. The largest asteroid is Ceres, a dwarf planet, and it is over 900 kilometers wide. But the next three big ones are less than 600 kilometers wide. There are just over about 200 asteroids or so that are over 100 kilometers wide. The rest of them range down in size all the way to small floating dust particles. The average distance between two asteroids is two and a half times the distance between the Earth and the Moon. So the asteroid belt is actually a very empty space and is the exact opposite of a crowded science fiction asteroid field. We have already sent several spacecraft through the asteroid belt without any impact or threat and in fact it's very hard to randomly collide with an asteroid without actually precisely aiming for it. Collisions between large asteroids do occur occasionally and they give rise to new asteroid families which comprise of members that all have similar characteristics and come from the same ancestral parental body. The asteroid belt formed halfway through the formation of all of our planets. Most astronomers believe that about a million years after the Sun was born, 4.6 billion years ago, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune formed first. Then, about a million years later, the asteroid belt began to form and then the inner planets started to form. This is because Jupiter was actually much closer to the Sun when it formed. Then when its orbit started to get influenced by Saturn's gravity and the two orbits started to get into a resonance, as the Nice model suggests, the gas giants and the ice giants migrated outwards and also scattered the rest of the material in the protoplanetary disk that forms the objects in the solar system. The asteroid belt itself today is still just a belt because of two main reasons. One is that it doesn't have enough mass and the other is that Jupiter's gravity actually does not allow all of the rocks to coalesce into a single body. As Jupiter moves around in its orbit, it keeps tugging at the asteroids it passes closest to, causing perturbations in their orbits. But even if Jupiter's effect did not exist today, there isn't enough mass in the asteroid belt to make up an entire planet. It is thought that when the asteroid belt formed, there was a mass that was equivalent to that of the Earth's. But a large number of these objects were ejected within just a million years of formation. And since then, the belt has remained relatively stable in both mass and distribution. Unlike comets, asteroids are not samples from the primordial solar system. Comets formed far out, far away from the sun and live like mobile freezers preserving all data and information from the solar system's very early days. But asteroids formed closer to the sun relatively. 
they've been heated and have undergone all kinds of space weathering. The asteroid Electra is a large outer main belt asteroid. It's not a new one. It was actually discovered back in 1873. It is named after Electra, not the Marvel character, but the OG Greek one. Electra is a Greek mythical character and a favorite in tragedies and sad poems. She and her brother avenged the death of their father by killing his murderer, their mother. So she was also an OG Avenger. In the asteroid belt, Electra is now the only known quadruple system and has the most satellites among any main belt asteroids. All the satellites are very close to it in terms of distance and are of varying sizes. The three that we know are about 2 kilometers and 6 kilometers wide and the new one is just about 1.6 kilometers wide. The new satellite is called S2014-132, a provisional designation for the satellite, which was discovered in data from December of 2014 using newer algorithms that identify faint objects. It is the innermost satellite and orbits closest to the asteroid Electra, about 345 kilometers from it. The moon goes around Electra once every 16 hours and like the other two moons also appears to have come from Electra itself, likely from a collision in the past. But the moon's orbit is unusual. It's not aligned with the other two and is highly eccentric. So the authors state that more observations are needed to accurately know and understand the orbital parameters of this new moon and why it got that way. Going by how sophisticated and complex telescopes are getting, this is just the beginning. We are likely to discover more quadruple systems and could have hope for even larger asteroid systems. Why not? More observations of the asteroid belt help us understand better the formation of such multi-moon systems of which we know many. So going forward, one day, maybe we will be able to answer the question, how many moons can an asteroid have at maximum? <laughs>